Picking up where we left off, antipsychotic drugs. Antipsychotic drugs are dangerous drugs that should only be used if there are a compelling reason, and preferably as short-term therapy at a low dose because the drugs produce severe and permanent brain damage. As explained above, even most patients with schizophrenia can avoid the drugs and it results in much better long-term outcomes than if they are treated and substantial financial savings as well. Antipsychotics increase the risk of dying substantially through a variety of mechanisms, which include suicide, cardiac arrhythmias, diabetes, and major weight gains. Drug companies have caused tremendous harm by their widespread illegal and aggressive promotion of the drugs for off-label use. The legal use is also increasing, for example, in children. The use of antipsychotics went up eightfold between 1993 through 1998 and 2005 through 2009, and it doubled in adults. The story of antipsychotics has many similarities to that of SSRIs. The clinical research wasn't aimed at clarifying the role of the new drugs for clinicians and patients, but was driven by marketing strategy, and new drugs were much hyped, although large, independent government-funded trials found they weren't better than old drugs. A trial of 498 patients with a first episode schizophrenia found no difference in discontinuation rates between four newer drugs, and haloperidol. Discontinuation rate is a sound outcome as it combines perceptions of benefits and harms of the drug. drugs. The study was funded by the three drug companies, but they were kept at arm's length. Antipsychotics are standard treatment for bipolar disorder, which is mainly iterogenic, caused by SSRIs and ADHD drugs. And they are also used for depression when treatment with an antidepressant is when treatment with an antidepressant is not enough. We now see advertisements, for example, for AstraZeneca about combination therapy for depression, and there are even preparations that combine the drugs in the same pill, for example, Sembiax from Lil from Lily, which contains Prozac. Fluoxetine and Zyprexa, Olanzapine, two of the worst psychotic drugs ever invented. Like for the SSRIs, there are many perverse trials supporting antipsychotics for virtually everything. In 2011, an AstraZeneca trial studying whether quintopine could prevent the development of psychosis in people as young as 15 years at risk of psychosis was stopped after the protests that it was unethical. There is no good reason to believe that these drugs can prevent psychosis. In fact, they cause psychosis in the long run, and most people at risk would never have developed psychosis. A 2009 meta-analysis of 150 trials with 21,533 patients showed that psychiatrists had been duped for 20 years. The drug industry invented catchy but entirely misleading terms such as second generation antipsychotics and atypical antipsychotics. But there is nothing special about the new drugs, and as they are widely heterogeneous, it's wrong to divide them into two classes. It's remarkable that it was possible to show in a meta-analysis of published trials that new drugs aren't better than old ones as the research literature is so flawed. Haloperidol is the comparator in most of the trials, as their design is often flawed. Using high doses or too quick dose increases for haloperidol and other drugs, resulting in a false claim that a new drug is similarly effective, but better tolerated. An analysis of 2,000 trials in schizophrenia revealed a disaster area of poor quality research that didn't even improve over time. And with 640 different instruments to measure the outcome, 369 of these mostly homemade scales 
were only used once. Unsurprisingly, an internal Pfizer memorandum shows that the flaws are introduced deliberately. If we are going to have to increase diothapin dosage from 75 milligrams to 100 milligrams, we should do so at one week, one week rather than two weeks, which would result in a high dropout rate of dothiapin due to side effects. By two weeks, patients have learned to live with the side effects. Cyprexa, another terrible Eli Lilly drug, turned into a blockbuster. The deceptions worked, as always. Everybody wants a modern drug, whatever that means. And this bad habit, and this bad habit is extremely costly, even when the modern drug is only an old drug in disguise. Olanzapine was an old substance and the patent was running out, but Lily got a new patent by showing that it produced less elevation of cholesterol in dogs than a never marketed drug. This was totally ludicrous. And in fact, olanzapine raises cholesterol mo more than other drugs. It could therefore have been marketed as a cholesterol raising drug, but that wouldn't have made as but that wouldn't have made Zyprexa a blockbuster with sales of around $5 billion per year for more than a decade. Damn. A Cochrane review from 2005 reported that the largest trial with olanzapine had been published 142 times in papers and conference abstracts. I'm not kidding. It was the same trial in 142 publications, the carpet bombing, also included criminal activities, and the aggressive marketing made Zyprexa the most widely used antipsychotic in the world, although it isn't any better than far cheaper alternatives. In 2005, Zyprexa was Lily's top selling drug at $4.2 billion. Money marketing and lies ensured that doctors didn't use the old cheap drugs. In 2002, the sales of Zyprexa were 54 times larger than the sales of Helipro Heliprodol in Denmark, amounting to a staggering 30 million euros a year, although our country is very small. But there was no excuse for this. Two years earlier, a meta-analysis was published in the BMJ that concluded that the new drugs have no unequivocal advantages for the first for first line use. The last time I checked the price of Zypre for Zyprexa, it cost seven times as much as Hel Heliprodol. It's irresponsible to waste so much money and patient organizations contribute to this. They know, they only know what the drug firms have told them or what the psychiatrists have told them, which is about the same, as the psychiatrists also generally only know what the drug firms have told them. It was therefore not surprising when the chairman of an organization for psychiatric patients in 2001 called it unethical that Danish psychiatrists, in her view, were too slow to use the newer antipsychotics such as Cyprexa and Rizpradal. Riziprodone. A researcher explained that many patients on Zyprexa increased their body weight by 15 to 25 kilograms during a few months. There was a risk of diabetes and that increased cholesterol was commonly seen. He also commented on the adverse effects of Risperdal and said that the likely reason that the chairman wanted these drugs to be used much more was that the adverse effects were little known. Wise words indeed. In chapter three, I described that Lilly agreed to pay more than $1.4 billion for illegal marketing for numerous off-label uses, including Alzheimer's depression and dementia. And Zyprexa was pushed particularly hard in children and the elderly. Although the harms of the drug are substantial, including heart failure, pneumonia, 
considerable weight gain and diabetes. In 2006, internal Lilly documents were leaked to the New York Times, which demonstrate the extent to which the company downplayed the risks of its drug. Lilly's chief, chief scientist, Alan Breyer, told employees in 1999 that weight gain and possible hyperglycemia is a major threat to the long-term success of this critically important molecule. But the company didn't, ex didn't discuss with outsiders that a 1999 study disclosed in the documents found that blood sugar levels in the patients increased steadily for three years. Lilly instigated legal action against a number of doctors, lawyers, journalists, and activists to stop them from publishing the incriminating leaked documents on the internet. And after the injunction, they disappeared. In 2007, Lilly still maintained that numerous studies had found that Zyprexa causes diabetes. Even though Zyprexa and similar drugs since 2003 on their label had carried an FDA warning that hyperglycemia had been reported. Lilly's own study showed that 30% of the patients gained at least 10 kilograms in weight after a year on the drug, and both psychiatrists and endocrinologists said that Zyprexa caused many more patients to become diabetic than other drugs. Zyprexa is likely more harmful than many other antipsychotics. In 2001, Lilly's best-selling antidepressant, Prozac, was running out of patent, and the company was desperate to somehow fool people into using Zyprexa also for mood disorder and called it a mood stabilizer rather than an antipsychotic. It doesn't stabilize the mood, and it was also a challenging that it was also a challenge that general practitioners were worried about the harms of psychotics, but Lilly was determined to change the paradigm. The internal documents say it all. In psychiatry, it doesn't really matter which drugs you have, as most drugs can be used more or less for everything, and psychiatrists are easily amendable for manipulation, even in the way they define and name their diseases. Let's estimate how many people Lily has killed with Cyprexa. In 2007, it was reported that more than 20 million people had taken Cyprexa. A meta-analysis of the randomized trials of olanzapine and similar drugs given to patients with Alzheimer's disease or dementia showed that 3.5% died on drug and 2.3% on placebo P equals 0 0.02, thus for every 100 patients treated there was one additional death on the drug. Elderly patients are often treated with several drugs and are more vulnerable to, to their harms, which means that the death rate is likely higher than in young patients. However, the reviewed trials generally ran for only 10 to 12 weeks, and most patients in real life are treated for years. Further, drugs like Cyprexa are most used in elderly and as deaths and as deaths are often underreported in trials the true death rate is likely higher than shown in the meta analysis one death in a hundred therefore seems a reasonable estimate to use i therefore estimate that 200,000 of the 20 million patients treated with cyprexa have been killed because of the drug's harms what is particularly saddening is that many of these patients shouldn't have been treated with Zyprexa. As Zyprexa is not the only drug, the death toll must be much higher than this. AstraZeneca silenced a trial that showed that quintapine, Seroquel, led to high rates of treatment discontinuations and significant weight increases while the company at the same time presented data at European and U.S. meetings that indicated that the drug helped psychotic patients lose weight. Speakers, speakers slide kit and at least one journal article stated that quintapine didn't increase body weight while internal data showed that 18% of the patients had a weight gain of at least 7%. AstraZeneca propagated other lies. 
They presented a meta-analysis of four trials showing that quintipine had better effect than haloperidol. But internal documents released through litigation showed it was exactly the opposite. Quintipine was less effective than haloperidol. The bottom line of psych psychotropic drugs. How come we have allowed drug companies to lie so much, commit habitual crime and kill hundreds of thousands of patients, and yet we do nothing? Why? Why don't we put those responsible in jail? Why are many people still against allowing citizens to get access to all the raw data from all clinical trials, and why are they against scrapping the whole system and only allowing publicly employed academics to test drugs in patients, independently of the drug industry? I know excellent psychiatrists who help their patients a lot, for example, David Healy uses watchful waiting before giving drugs to first episode patients. I also know that some drugs can be helpful sometimes for some patients, and I am not anti-psychiatry in any way, but my studies in this area lead me to a very uncomfortable conclusion. Our citizens would be far better off if we removed all the psychotropic drugs from the market, as doctors are unable to handle them. It is inescapable that their availability creates more harm than good. Yes, sir. Mighty chapter, mighty chapter, my goodness. Okay, chapter, that was chapter 18. We'll be doing chapter 19 next.